Hi right, guys. It is a hot, sticky mid-August day in early May here in the hellhole of the great state of Texas here, where I will be leaving if I don't die of heat stroke in the next four days. But it is now, although it feels like the middle of August, I think it is Friday, May 6th. 2022 as we swelter and bake from Texas to India but being Friday it is time for my weekly ecological meltdown roundup rant where I <coughs> head over to mongabay.com to see what is on the minds of Rhett Butler and the boys and girls at Manga Bay as they take a uh, a tour around our collapsing planet. And we're gonna start, all right, we have a new index measuring the human impacts on the Amazon's waters. All right, based on the best scientific data available, the unprecedented <coughs> Amazon water, Im water impact index draws together monitoring and research data to identify the most vulnerable areas of the Brazilian Amazon, which I think is the entire Brazilian Amazon. According to the index, 20% of the 11,216 Brazilian Amazon micro basins have an impact considered high very high or extreme, and half of these watersheds are affected by hydroelectric plants. 20%. Uh, I'm not buying it, guys. 20% uh, my you-know-what uh, of the Amazon's waters being affected by humans. Yes. The Amazon River Basin covers 7 million square kilometers or 2.7 million square miles and, ca and contains 20% of all fresh water on the Earth's surface. Still, little is known about the impacts of increased human activity on aquatic ecosystems, well, I think a, a lot more is going to be known about that. 20% uh, anyway. Um, Alright, and I'm just going to be picking out a few of the uh, collapse related story. Alright, this is more they're talking about uncontacted tribes in the Gran Chaco. I have a, again, I have a hard time believing this. The Gran Chaco, a dry forest that stretches across Paraguay, Bolivia, and Argentina, is one of the fastest disappearing ecosystems on the planet. It's home to uh, this tribe whose name I'm not going to begin to pronounce, one of the only known uncontacted indigenous groups left in South America outside of the Amazon. Yes, uh, Members of the group approached a camp of their contacted relatives to express their concerns about escalating forest destruction. Do you think so? Uh, do you, would you believe that land restoration requires immediate action? Says New. I'm quite sure this is a dire UN report. <clears throat> Global food systems, otherwise known as farming, are responsible for 80% of the world's deforestation, 70% of the 
of freshwater use and contribute to 40% of the planet's degraded land, according to the latest report by the UN's Convention to Combat Desertification. Yes. The cost to restore 1 billion degraded hectares, otherwise known as 2.5 billion acres of land by 2030, is estimated to be $300 billion annually. I'm sure that's going to happen. Uh, anyway, let's see. Moving on, uh, again, I'm just skipping over a lot of this. I have a picking party to get ready for, and uh, the little dog is, uh, you might be able to hear his stomach growling. I think we need some Pepto-Bismol for my heat-stressed little dog. Okay. Ecuador is promising more openness of fisheries information. Yep, 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 yep. <clears throat> okay, this is Manga Bay analysis of the uh, of that little scuffle going on over there on the other side of the pond. Amid war, Ukrainians are tracking Russia's crimes against the environment with civilian and political welfare as the Ukraine, Ukrainian government's number one priority, environmental destruction has largely been overlooked during the little scuffle. But civilians and experts alike have rallied together to record more than 100 separate instances of, quote, Crimes against the environment yes. <clears throat> from the destruction of fuel and gas depots to the long-term effects of ecosystem services on Ukraine, known as the breadbasket of the world, environmental crises can also become humanitarian crises or the other way around. Uh, from there, as long as we're talking about our little friend Vladimir the Impaler. So what is Philip Fernside? Uh, I always like to check in with Philip each week. He is connecting dots between Putin's, he is looking at Putin's financial interest in Brazil's Amazon highways uh, and take imag imagine what Putin's interest is. <clears throat> Rosneft, a giant Russian government oil and gas company, has bought drilling rights to 16 blocks in the vast area of still intact rainforest in the western part of Brazil's Amazon region. A planned highway would give access directly to three of these blocks and branch roads would be likely to be built to the other Ross Neff tracks. Do you blocks? Do you believe so? <clears throat> Vladimir Putin appointed a Ross Neff's CEO, a close friend who is considered to be the most powerful person in Russia after Putin himself. Yes. Uh, building the highways would financially benefit Putin's associates and either directly or indirectly Putin himself. Rosneft is capable of influencing Brazilian authorities to prioritize these highways. It is unknown what was discussed about energy when uh, Brazilian President Jair Bozo Nero 
met with Putin in Moscow for three hours just before the invasion of Ukraine. There you go. All right. We have a little bit of hopium here about coral reef restoration. Moving on. Yes, I, I, I'm sure this is going to be a, a, a concerted probe. Indonesia to probe the scale of tax dodging illegal oil palm plantations. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Anyway, moving on. All right. Let's go back to the Brazilian Amazon. Surge in deforestation as Brazil pushes to pave a forgotten Amazon road. Yes, the rate of deforestation and the incidence of fire both surged in 2021 in an expanse of the Amazon where the Brazilian government plans to pave an abandoned road. Yes, uh, this I think is the same road that Philip Fernside was talking about. Uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, this, imagine this. So this is another article. <coughs> Just another way of uh, looking at this. Um, the highway was built in the 1970s, but has but was abandoned. Successive governments have called for reviving it by paving a 250-mile section of dirt track. <coughs> but it is on. But it is likely only under the current administration of Jair Bozo Nero that the, that the plan appears likely to go ahead. This prospect of, of the road being paved has driven a surge of forest clearing and fires by land grabbers near the road. Yep, yep, yep. With the situation continuing to worsen. Do you think so? Did you realize that we are in the decade of ecosystem restoration? Yes, the UN has declared the 2020s the decade of ecosystem restoration, which is like Sancho Panza declaring the 2020s as the decade of chipmunk. Uh, chipmunk what? Uh, <laughs> I, decade of, in, anyway, <clears throat> I think we know what we mean. Yes. Looking at agricultural techniques to restore ecosystems. There you go. How about abandoning agriculture and making ecosystems a human free zone to restore ecosystems? Yes. Anyway, what is going on in Sri Lanka? <laughs> Sri Lanka's environmentalists brace for economic meltdowns toll on nature. The deepening economic crisis in Sri Lanka is expected to hit the environment and biodiversity conservation hard, experts warn. Acute fuel shortages mean the Department of Wildlife Conservation having to ration out fuel when it can get it for its patrol vehicles. 
while its revenue from tourism receipts at national parks has evaporated, experts warn that skyrocketing prices of food and other essentials could push a growing number of desperate Sri Lankans into environmental crimes such as illegal logging for firewood, poaching for bush meat, and sand mining. Yes. The crisis also threatens to undo hard-earned gains and undermine future commitments such as programs on emissions reduction, ending deforestation, and achieving, achieving the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. <laughs> Do you think so? And uh, anyone not familiar with the Bill Gatey uh, hypothesis of the sixth mass extinction, this is a classic example of how it is going to be the economic collapse that will be the final trigger that uh, as people no longer have money to buy food, what do you think you're going to see from Sri Lanka to certainly Sub-Saharan Africa and eventually probably here in the great state of Texas poaching for bush meat. Anyway. Yes. Uh, to secure a future for wildlife, look at their distant past. Yes. Uh, Looking at, uh, this is, uh, anyway, this is too complicated to go over, uh, and this little rant, uh, here's another article on, uh, the seagrass, uh, collapse. This is coming out of Indonesia's collapsing seagrass. Good Lord, we have collapsing seagrass in Indonesia, Florida, California. Anyway, all right. Uh, what's going on with tropical mammals? At least those tropical mammals not uh, in the stew pot. Tropical mammals under rising chemical pollution pressure, study warns. Pesticides, pharmaceuticals, plastics, nanoparticles, and other toxic synthetic materials are being released into the environment in ever greater amounts. Hmm. A recent study warns that action is needed to better monitor and understand their impacts on terrestrial mammals in the tropics. Mortality and mass die-offs could result, but the sublethal effects are perhaps of greater concern over the long term. Yep, yep, yep. Another study released this year, which I talked about, reports that the novel entity's planetary boundary has now been transgressed. Novel entities include pesticides and other substances. <clears throat> the boundary was declared breached because scientific assessments cannot keep up with all the new chemicals entering the environment. Yep, yep, yep. All right. <clears throat> A 
Why are Florida manatees showing up in Cuba and Mexico? The, uh, the sightings have several still unproven explanations, including that degraded habitats, can we say the collapse of the seagrass beds on the Florida coast are forcing the animals to move elsewhere to look for food in the regions. Yep. Anyway, all right. Enough is enough. California subpoenas ExxonMobil over plastic pollution. I mentioned this in my rant yesterday about how California Attorney General Bob Bonta has subpoenaed ExxonMobil as part of an investigation into the role fossil fuels and petrochemical industries have played in the widening plastic crisis. The Department of Justice is looking into whether ExxonMobil deliberately misled the public about the harmful effects of plastics and the difficulties of recycling it. Yes, in response, ExxonMobil says the company shares society's concerns about the plastic crisis. Yep, yep, yep. Environmental experts have welcomed the investigation, saying it is time for the fossil fuel and petrochemical industries to be held accountable for the role they have played in this environmental issue. Yep, yep, yep. What? Okay, guys, good lord, this goes on as on. Talking about how the conservation costs are rarely reported. Anyway, that's too much to get into here. Uh, all right, good for Indonesian villagers fighting a mining firm. Court setback does not sway villagers fighting the mine. Yes. Uh, this is one of these giant gold mines eating the planet. Uh, here's an article looking at trophy huntings in Namibia. Yes, a morally contentious practice that has been adapted into a conservation strategy. You know, talking about is the money raised by these clueless moron uh, assassins, does it outweigh, you know, this debate. I've been hearing this debate since I was 10 years old. All right, I think this was part of yesterday's rant, or maybe this was never mentioned. How about this for an idea? To stop plastic pollution, we must stop plastic production, scientists warn. A team of scientists working in the field of plastics, working in a field of plastics, has published a letter in Science calling for the cessation of new plastic production in order to solve the plastic pollution issue. Yes, plastic is not only an issue when it comes to its disposal, but its production generates, generates large volumes of greenhouse gas emissions. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, let's see. I think we're already running into last week's rant about boats behaving 
badly. Anyway, guys, I am uh, sweating like a pig in my uh, in my shirt. Can you hear the uh, the belly groaning on this little dog? Anyway, another day on the planet, May 6, 2022. And uh, I have to go find the little dog some Pepto-Bismol. And I got to go rehydrate and head to a picking party in Austin, Texas while I still can. We're looking at 100 degrees in Austin, Texas tomorrow. The first triple-digit day on May 7th. And uh, I am out of here on Tuesday, assuming the little dog and I do not die of heat stroke in the next four days. Bye, guys. Okay, you little uh, stomach gurgler. You need to go find you some Pepto-Bismol, little dog.